Hey folks, this is IOE throwing back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Cameron Fennel. Did you read that right? I think so. Um, <laughs> welcome to the channel, sir. I'm pretty sure I've never read your name before, which means you haven't had your replay up here before, so thank you for saying it in. Uh, this is an uh, Object 277 game in a tier 10 match on Mountain Pass. Now, there are some tier 8s here, so this might get a bit um, sad to, to whittle tanks at some point in time. But for now, we're just going to roll on through. Um, if you guys are noticing the camera's in a different spot than normal, that's because it's a new camera and it still won't cooperate with me. And I'm recording this all on the same day. I recorded Mondays on, which happens to be Monday, weirdly enough. Um, oh, yeah, I rammed that thing. I'm I'm glad I apologized in advance to um, <laughs> to small tanks because we definitely murdered one right there. <laughs> I actually really enjoy the position he's in. He is, well, uh, okay. He's more or less held down behind this little mound here, which is going to make this uh, 60 TP a lot harder to, or a lot harder for the 60 TP to aim at him. That's what I was trying to say. And for, actually, the 60 TP has just decided to ignore him and is focusing on his teammates. Not that that works at will for it. And uh, it's dead. Unfortunately, it dies right in the middle of this bridge, which is going to make this a little awkward to get past. Ah, uh, well, never mind. Just please slide him past. I remember that bridge being smaller and hands up to whoever's fallen off it before. <laughs> right? Try and do that exact move because I've, I've done that more than a few times. In tanks, a little bit wider than this one. Um, oh look, an STRV. Unfortunately, the snapshot misses, and we're gonna back up to make sure we're not exposed to any more shots from, well, any shots from those guys. Um, taking cover behind these bushes. He's if he rolls backwards, he'll be able to fire without being lit. Looks like he doesn't bother rolling backwards until after he fires. So we definitely got lit there. Um, and the, I don't know if he needs to auto aim. Um, I think the auto aim was just a bit of a mistake. It didn't didn't end up costing him anything, uh, but it could have. Ooh, Lorraine on one side. No. Yes, that's a Lorraine. That's what that is. I saw the L and assumed without bothering to actually verify that's what that is. No, that's a Len. A Lenson. See, actually, um, I don't know why I'm yawning. I, uh... Ooh, STRV from the front, though, is going to be hard to pen. So he's either got to hit that, um, that Kapoa up, up where he was actually aiming, or he needs to fire some HE, and then he'll be golden. There we go. Penned, finally. Um, probably with the HE. Didn't actually see what he had loaded up when he fired, but I'm going to assume it was HE. Now he needs to switch over to Wrangler rounds because his Lansing isn't going to go down just by, uh, well, HE to the base as much as might be fun to pen him with some HE. Oh, T92. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say that thing's a threat. No, no, it's really not. I don't know what the T92 was paying attention to, but it wasn't us. And uh, auto aim is on again. I don't like the auto aim. Um, because of the fact that aim for center mass, though, it did assist in the kill. It's no, I still think it was a mistake to have it on. Um, aiming at the T-13 Glenn, and there's no auto aim there. Uh, it doesn't mean we're not going to get up that hill, though. I mean, if the uh, trailer come... Props to the arty. I mean, he just he took us out. Obviously, he didn't take us out. But 500 damage is no joke, and if you can get, take a tier 10 and a tier 8 tank, um, especially if you're going to die otherwise, go ahead and do it. Nice snipe on the T-30 manages to hit him, but uh, we are quickly losing this battle, and that uh, that artillery's dive over, uh, over the embankment actually really did help his team out, taking out a tier 10 as a trade for his life. Oh! W said was sneaking up on us, but not anymore. 
Unfortunately, though, he does get a solid hit into us, so it is going to make this harder. T30 is... If the T30 was advancing, yep, T30 is actually... Ooh, a lot closer. This is bad. T30 whiffs the shot. And now we got to press forward. Unfortunately, that OA was the thing that killed us last time. Thankfully, he turns it off. And it isn't the thing that kills us this time. We're going to speed this up because he is nowhere near any enemies right now. Um, and we don't have all day to sit around and watch this. Mm. I assume there's a Type 4 Heavy just around this corner. Uh, where else would he be? There's not too many places concerning where the moss is. Uh, so he's probably either rolling up this... Yep, yeah, rolling up this hill. Put a shot straight through his face and then roll back out of his way. Meaning, oh, and then the Type 4 rolls back again. I'm guessing he wants us to reload and shoot him again. So let's just re... What? A, he was firing AP. Why didn't he aim for a weak spot? I don't know. And B, how did we miss or bounce? Firing heat, this thing should have gone straight through him. Oh well. Uh, and there, we know exactly where the two enemy tanks are, so we're just going to fast forward while we get there. So, this is one of those things where. <laughs> the enemies had the game in their hands and they started throwing it away by not playing as a group because they didn't play as a team they played as individual tanks trying to claim as much victory as they could and glory before the game ended this game is a lot closer now than it once was now we know at least one of those tanks is in the base capping Turns out to be I-7 and he's looking at us. Which frees up the moss to uh, scope in on him. VK is trying to try jump on us. Knowing that we've just fired. He actually fires and starts circling us. And the I-7 comes with him. Great team play by these two right now. Um, unfortunately, it might not be enough. Oh, no. I-7. Yep. Yeah, he's on our flank. Ooh, IS-7 is dead. VK actually puts a shell into us. And it... <laughs> Holy smokes. Who's going to reload first? Who's going to reload first? He does. And he fired APCR. If he had fired he, uh, HE and he'd aimed for the Coppola, this would have had a different ending. But in the panic, and in the, the, the adrenaline at the end of the game, he just hit that toucan and he stopped thinking. 30 health left on us. All I needed to do was a little bit of splash damage from, from HE, and this game would have been over. But he didn't. He didn't think about that. He just fired gold. And because of it, it lost him the game. He had the quicker reload. He, if he had been firing HE, fired for a Kapoa, there would have been enough damage going through to kill us. And this would have been a different outcome. Well done, Cameron. Well done, sir. And by the way, if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, I'm truly sorry. But, uh, wow. This was an awesome game. And uh, let's jump over and see what his battle stats were. Ace Tanker, Hand of God, Bruiser, Duos, Fire for Effect, Shell Proof, 14 Bonds, a Radley Walters, Spartan, Steel Wall, High Caliber, and Top Gun. Wait a second. That feels incredibly familiar. Haven't I just read off these lists of <laughs> things not too long ago? The only difference is because he wasn't in a platoon, there was no Brothers in Arms and Crucial Contribution. But other than that, a lot of these stats are pretty similar to the Fight 5 game we saw on Monday. That's pretty cool. Unfortunately, there was nobody on the team he could have partnered up with in order to get that brother in Brothers in Arms medal. And again, one kill shy of the Pools medal. Ah, oh, it's going to be so frustrating. But in this scenario, unlike on Mondays, he actually makes money and gets to walk away a little happier than he otherwise would. Thank you so much, Cameron, for saying this in. Thank you, everybody, for watching. 
And I can't wait to see you guys all next time as IOE throughout.